Hey, my name is Kenneth Martin. Um, we're here to do the Epitaxis um, OSCE. Um, throughout this OSCE, um, what, what, what I've been called to has been called to a 28 year old male. He has had a spontaneous onset of Epitaxis. Over the last, um, some back, over the last 45 minutes, he has bled around about 200 mils. Um, I've taken a look at him um, since we've come in. He isn't. He what's it called? It isn't. It's not squirting. It's just dribbling very lightly. I've already asked him um, whether he's had any allergies. Um, he's got no allergies. He's not taking any medication. He does, however, have a past medical history of um, epitaxis over the last two years, and it's just come on and off. Um, the last thing, he, last time he ate was actually during lunchtime. Um, it was during lunchtime. And the activity that he was doing during the during the prior to the um, episode occurring was that he was washing the dishes and um, it's it's quite a hot day today um, he says and it just it just came on spontaneously so what I've got him to do is I've got him to pinch the fleshy part of his nose lean forward and I put a cold towel on the back of his neck. Um, this is to hope, hopefully improve vasoconstriction. So right now I've got him sitting here for the last 15 minutes um, with this cold towel on the back of his head. Um, and that's re usually recommended when we should reassess it and check to see if it's still bleeding. So I'm just gonna have a quick look now. So just take that off and have you take a look. Yeah, so um, it looks like it's still bleeding. Um, I'm gonna to have to advise you that um, we're gonna to have to give you, because it is still bleeding, um, what we can do now is um, we can give you some IN adrenaline. This is to hopefully help with the vasoconstriction and hopefully help um, the bleeding. Mm -hmm. You've had previous episodes of this, so you might have, you might be familiar with this. Yep. Yeah. Um, but that's what we're gonna do now. Now that we've clarified that we're gonna be giving um, our patients um, adrenaline, we found a clean and we found a sanitary place to actually get the drugs ready. Um, what, what, what I've done is um, for this exercise we don't actually have adrenaline um, so we're going to pretend that we have adrenaline here. We have saline and we're going to pretend this is a one milligram of one mil of adrenaline. Um, we've got another saline bottle here which is just normal saline 0.9%. Um, we've gotten our, my offside um, to check the drugs, make sure that they're all okay and we've made sure that the drugs aren't expired and they're still within, they're, st they're still good. Um, what we will need for this scenario is we'll need a 10 mil syringe, we'll need a 3 mil syringe, some drawing up needles, and a mucosal um, optimizing um, device. And this is to pop it in his nose. Um, and we've also got a sharp container. So what we're going to do, we're going to have our 10 mil syringe, and we're going to draw up 9 mils of normal saline so this is it here the normal saline we've already drug checked it pop that off we're going to draw up nine mils yes just a little bit more pop it back on that's nine mils. Next, we're gonna get our adrenaline, which is one milligram and one mil. And we're gonna draw up, sorry? And we're gonna draw up one mil. So we'll pretend this is the adrenaline. And we're gonna make the other 10 mils with one mil. There we go. So now we've got a solution of adrenaline, one in 10,000. Perfect. I'm gonna pop this one away. Next, we're gonna transfer two mils of this into our three mil syringe. We have our three mil syringe here. Open that up. Give that two. And we're just gonna administer three mils into it. Draw up a little bit more. Just fold that in. 
Beautiful. Now that we've got um, two mils in a three mil syringe, that makes 0.2 milligrams of adrenaline in two mils. Get this. Pop it back over there. Now we're just going to screw on the uh, mucosal atomizing device, and this will help us insert it into his nose. So now that I've got this on here, we're going to administer it to the patient. Um, how I'm going to administer it is I'm going to have him lean his head back. Uh, prior to this, I'm going to get him to blow, blow his nose and blow any of the clots out to make it clear. Um, next, I'm going to get him to lean his head back. I'm going to place this in his nose and tell him to take a big sniff. And when he sniffs, I'll, I'll empty them into the, into the nostrils. And, and we'll do it by we'll do it to both both nostrils as well. Hi, sir. So um, we've got in the adrenaline here. This is um two mils um two mils and a three mils syringe, and we're gonna try to remove um we're gonna try to remove this clot. So we'll grab this towel. Um, I'm gonna have to ask you if you could please blow your nose. Um, this is just to remove any clots that might go in yeah. before we administer this. Um, this is prior to 15 minutes. Um, he is still bleeding, unfortunately. Um, so what I'm gonna have to ask you to do, sir, is can you please just just lean your head back now that you've nicely cleared it, and I'm gonna say one, two, three, and then three. I just want you to sniff, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna administer, administer, okay? You pop it in there. One, two, three. Good. So we've administered. Um, we've administered the gentleman, and now I'm just going to ask you if you can just hold that, hold your nose, lean forward with it, and just hold your nose the next 15 minutes. Um, while you hold your nose, um, I'm just going to grab a full set of vitals. So what I would do if I was grabbing his uh, vitals is I would grab a full set of vitals. This would include a BGL. This would include a um, what's it called blood pressure, heart rate, rest rate. Um, um, we're just going to make sure that there's nothing really out of the out of the ordinary here um while he holds his nose um so it feels like it's been it's been around about 15 minutes that he's been holding his nose uh, we're just gonna have a, we're just gonna have a quick look again um well, let's take a look just let it go and just leave, leave your head up yep so we can see that the bleeding has stopped um all his vitals are actually looking normal um there's nothing out of the ordinary, uh, he's not really showing any signs of dehydration either, um, and um, I am happy to actually, um, I'm, a, I'm happy with how it went. Um, now, sir, if this does happen again, um, I do advise you to see a GP. Um, if it if it does if it starts if it does start to bleed again, I also advise that you do go you do go and see a GP within the next few hours just to see what's happening and just so you can gather a bit more information and why your nose has started bleeding. Mm -hmm. um, for the next couple of days, um, at least I would avoid picking your nose, I would avoid any hot showers, um, try to avoid bleeding your nose as this can dislodge any clots and actually cause um, the bleeding to start up again. And also I know it's difficult but I'll try to refrain from sneezing as well. Um, um, are you in any pain right now? No. No, and you're feeling okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, yeah. Are you taking any anticoagulants? No. Nope. Um, okay. Not on any medications. Okay. So um, if you want bleeding a little bit heavier or a little bit more severe, or moderate, I would consider transporting. But um, I am quite happy to leave you here. Um, now because I'm leaving you here, I'm going to be running a non, a run non transport parts checklist. Um. So with this checklist, basically states um. I have yes, I've given you a recommendation to um, go to a GP, go to a doctor. Um, I've fully assessed you. I've completely grabbed your vitals as well. Um, I feel I've done a, an appropriate investigation um, to rule out any abnormalities. Um, and it seems that apart from your nose bleed, you are actually got you are you are actually quite well. Um, you don't have any serious illnesses. Um, there's no obvious injuries. Um, that we can see. Um, 
I've also assessed to see that he is mobile. Um, you can stand up. Um, you can you can stand up and you can move around and you can go toilet. Is that correct? Okay. Um, but just remember, if anything does happen again, um, please contact your GP. Um, or give us a call back if the bleeding is severe, um, and we'll come back and we'll try to we'll try to um, make sure everything is okay. Um, from here. Um, I'll sit down and I'll complete my PRF, um, and I'll leave. I'll leave the patient with just some paperwork, um, and it'll just give him some good advice about what he should do if this happens again, and um, more about his condition. Like say, so I've been called into a um, call, called to a statement for a 27-year-old female with um, complaining of lower back pain. Um, basically, um, what we know is that. She was doing an activity. She's bent up quickly, and she's um, developed a sh she developed um, a painful stimulus in the lower part of her back. Um, so this is my patient here, and I'm going to run through her um, as you would do in a normal scenario. Um, hey, Jersey, I'm Kenny from AT. Um, Hi. What's what's happened? Oh, uh, just trying to pick something up, and yep. then trying getting up. So can you explain? Just really painful on my back. Can you explain to me the events prior to um, to what actually occurred? Just try to pick something just up. Just try to pick something up. And then I think I got up too quick suddenly and yep. oh. Okay. Um. Do you mind if I um while while we're doing this, I'm also gonna get um for the sake of scenario, I'll also get my offside to um grab vitals. Um, while I'm questioning the patient, is that okay if uh, my offside grabs some vitals off you? Um, you're just gonna grab temperature, blood pressure, um, rest rate, um, what's it called? Make sure that your heart rate's going well. Is mm -hmm. that okay? Mm -hmm. Um, is it also okay if I just take a look at your back? Um, mm -hmm. just to see where the pain is. Yeah, sure. Okay. So it's gonna move you over here. It's gonna bring it up. I'll just take a look. You mind just bending forward? Is, oh, is that too painful? Oh. Yep. So um, I'm just exposing it. Really painful. Um, just, just, painful just, just that. Just that spot. Just that okay. spot. So Nowhere I'm, else. So I'm just looking for any um, any bruising. Um, I don't see any bruising. I don't see any deformities. Anything. Okay. I'm just gonna assess you from the top to the back. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm just gonna put slowly just palpate my finger down. And tell me when you feel pain. Anything? Nothing. What about there? Just, just in there. Just there? Just you feel that pressure, a bit of pain? Yes. Okay. You can put that back down for now. Um, is the pain radiating anywhere? No, no? just there. It's not and moving? You're not spot. getting any funny sensations? No. Okay. And by funny sensations, I mean anything where the top of your thigh, thigh, the inside of your thighs, no. around your back region. No. It doesn't feel sore, anything, not getting anything different? No. Okay. Um. Have you ever had chest pain before? Did this bring on your? Did you get any chest pain prior to no. this? And is this the first time you ever had pain like this? Yes. Okay. Um. Other, other than this, um. Back pain. Are you otherwise feeling well? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah, I'm generally pretty healthy. Okay. Well, right now my um, off side hopefully would have got to come back with the vitals. Um. The vitals. Um. That he's given me. Um. Well, obviously they appear normal. Mm -hmm. They don't appear like anything's out of shape. The temperature is good. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. Blood pressure is good. Heart rate's good. Um, we're not seeing anything abnormal there. Yes. Um, we don't see a fever. You don't have any abdominal pain. No. Or anything whatsoever. No. No. And no chest pain whatsoever as well. Um, are you feeling any anything out of the ordinary pins and needles? Anything? No. Prior to this, no. Okay. Um. Just to be safe, I'm just gonna do a, do a quick neurological exam, okay? Okay. Um, we're just gonna examine your feet. So for this, um, I'm gonna get you to put your feet up, okay? Um, I've got to actually set this up over here, and you can put your feet up there. Perfect. So for your feet, I'm just gonna expose your feet, obviously, and I'm just gonna take a look. Mm -hmm. Hmm. There we go. One. And just the other foot as well. 
Yeah. Was that painful to actually put your feet up there like this? No. No, it wasn't painful? Okay. Um, now that I've done that, um, do you have any sensation, anything in your feet that, that you put your feet on? No. Yeah. Is it is it more sort of move at night, or is it more is it more sort to actually move in during the day? Do you find the same? Yeah. So it's a bit less. So it's it's roughly around the same. You you know. At night. At night time. Okay. I think I, so. You find that it's that you're okay to move around. Yeah, I'm all right to move yeah. around. Okay. Well, um, and you're okay to go to the bathroom as well? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to have a, have a feel of your feet there. A feel for the pulse. Okay, so you've got a pedal pulse. Check in your, check your right foot. I'll check your um, left foot as well. So you've got a good, you've got a good pulse um, in both feet. That's good. Um, I'm just going to make sure that, what's it called, that you're, you're correlating with um, sensation well, okay? Okay. So you can just close your eyes. And you can just tell me which foot I'm touching. Left. Yep. Right. Right. Okay. Um, can you also just wiggle your toes for me? You see, you've got good movement there. The color's looking good. Um, and just tense your glutes as well. Yep, so you're, you're moving everything fine there. You're not getting any pain when you tense your glutes? No. No? Your feet, you're, you're moving your feet quite well as well. Now I'm just going to take check your um, um pre prevent prevenal nerve um, mm -hmm. located in your foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do now is just as I push down, just uh, push back towards my hands. Yeah, that's good. Strong. I just push, push my try to push my hands down. Okay. I'm just going to do that one at a time as well. Push up. Yep. Push down. Any pain? No. Push up. Yeah, and down. No. Okay. Um, you're actually looking good. Um, your feet are moving well. Um, now I'm just gonna do another test. Now we're doing a lot of tests. We're just gonna make sure that we're just gonna do a soft hard test, okay? Okay. I'm gonna put something soft to your foot. I'm gonna put something hard. You just wanna tell me. Tell me if maybe you can tell me. This, okay. Yes. Grab this tissue you have here. Now just grab my pen as well, okay? So give me your hand. Uh, this is tissue. Mm -hmm. um, that there mm -hmm. is the um, hard one, okay? Mm -hmm. so you can just close your eyes again for me. I won't be doing your head, I'll be doing your feet. And just tell me which one is which. Tissue? Yeah. Pen. And one more? Tissue? Yeah. Pen. Perfect. Good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, from what I can see, it's looking good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to get you to do what I'll do now. So I'll just get you to pop, pop your socks back on. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't need, you don't need your feet like this anymore. And it's not too painful. Okay. Now, I know you've told me that you don't have any um, abdominal pain or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but I'm still just going to check, I'm just going to make sure that everything's okay. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for this, um, I'm just going to palpate, mm -hmm. okay? And I'll just do a bit of quick oscillation um, as well, mm -hmm. make sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. So, right. Let me just lean back a little bit, here. And just tell me if you feel any pain. No. No? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. No. 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 Okay, so you're getting no pain no. over there. That's no. quite good. I'm just gonna have, I'm just gonna lift your shirt up as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna take a look, okay? Yeah, so it doesn't look like there's any obvious bruising. Um mm -hmm. colour looks good. Um everything's looking good. Um I don't see any bruising. Um mm -hmm. because of this, um the abdomen also feels soft, it doesn't feel distended. Mm -hmm. Um no pre um, pre book of bruising or anything like that. Um, I don't think it's um, aortic aneurysm. I don't think it'd be um, uh, any kid kidney injuries. I don't think you would have appendicitis or anything like that. Um, so were you checking for embolism from my um, feet? No.
No, I was just taking a look just to make sure that 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 nerve pain didn't travel travel down. Mm -hmm. If it did, it could indicate something worse. It could indicate something like oh, sciatic nerve damage or something. Okay. Mm. Well, I'm also just. You haven't had any bow unusual bowel movements, anything recently? No. Nope. You don't have a history of cancer? No. You haven't lost any unexpected amount of weight recently that's unusual no. to you or towards you? You're not amino -compr compromised or anything like that? No. Okay. Um, you don't have any osteoporosis? No. Okay, and you... I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but you'll, do you take any medications for leukemia? No. Okay, that's good. Um, from what I can assess, um, you don't have a history of back pain, this is your first time. Mm -hmm. um, everything kind of looks good. I'm guessing it's, you may have just have an, you may just have an isolated lower back pain. Um, I don't think you have any sign of nerve pain. Um, you also don't really have any loss of bowel motions, so it's unlikely you're going to be having any spinal cord issues or anything. Mm -hmm. um, when was the last time you had pain relief? Do you know? No, I don't really have You didn't take any pain relief for this? No, I just... Okay. No. Have you had, have you had Panadol before? Yeah, I had Panadol yeah, do, before. Do you have some at home with you? Uh, yes, I do. Perfect. Do you mind if I just take um, take a look at it, make sure that it's in date and everything? Um, yeah, just sure. to clear it out? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Take a look at right. it. Yeah. So, it looks good. It's mm -hmm. not expired. Mm -hmm. um, everything's in date. Um, you, I'm assuming you're under 80 kgs as well? Yes. Yep. So what I would recommend, um, just to help ease the back pain, mm -hmm. is if you can take one gram um, every four hours, um, and try to, try to stay on top of it as well. Um, giving you don't have any allergies to this? Um, oh, I have uh, allergies to ibuprofen. Ibuprofen, but not to paracetamol? Not to paracetamol. Okay, that's okay. Um, you have no liver disease or anything? No. Um, Obviously, you don't have any, um, you don't have any uh, abdominal pain either, um, and you haven't taken it for the last four hours. So I think it's, I think it'd be safe for you just to take, take one gram every every four hours. Try to stay on top of it and proactive as well. So okay. yeah. if you can, say you're gonna get up, mm -hmm. um, out of bed, um, and you know you're gonna be doing a bit of movement, try to take some uh, prior to that. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, you're allergic to um, ibuprofen as well. Mm -hmm. I'll actually, I'll give, you the, I'll give you the dose now of the paracetamol. Mm -hmm. okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, I know that you're allergic to um, ibuprofen. Um, we do have something else called Trevidol that we can give you. Mm -hmm. um, this dose, it's a, it's a little bit stronger. Um, it work, not really strong, but it works, it works in a different way to the paracetamol. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, I guess you haven't you haven't taken these in the last forty for, um last four hours. No, um, you're not pregnant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you don't have any other babies. You're not breastfeeding or anything. Okay. So I think it'd be safe to give you about 50, 50 milligrams of these mm -hmm. as well. So I'll grab you that over there as well. Thank you. Do I have that now? Yeah, you can take it now. Okay. Um, I'll just give my offside just about another set of vitals as well. Um. Just get one less set, set of vitals um, before my patient before um, we go on, um, and just to see how they coping and how, just to see how they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also going to get you to. Um, it might be a bit painful. I might seem a bit mean, but um, you wouldn't be able to just stand up for me, would you? I just want to see see if you're mobile. See if you can walk around. Is that okay? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's alright. Do I walk around? I mean, just take a couple steps. Is that you? Are you having any pain there? Just a little bit. Here. Just a little bit, but it's manageable. It's manageable. Okay. okay. You, you can take a seat. So what I want you to do, um, I want you to try to keep mobile. Okay. Um, the more you sit and the more you rest, the more your spine actually stiffens up, mm -hmm. um, and com actually compresses together. So I just want you to stay a bit mobile and try to move around and try to loosen it up. Um, if it obviously if it gets too painful, um, try to get into a comfortable position. But try to also try to keep on top of your pain relief and try to keep moving. Um, mm -hmm. And if it does happen again, um, what's it called? And the pain is persisting, I do recommend that you go and see your GP. We can arrange um, a consultation. We can call them up now and arrange it. But I do recommend if it does get if it does persist, 
that you call your GP. Um, if it gets any worse and it starts to get sharp or anything, back pain, mm -hmm. anything like that, do call us back. Um, we'll be happy to come back. Um, just to give you a quick, um, quick assessment. Um, I do, I do have an info sheet for you on back pain that we do keep with us, and I'll just go and hand that to you. We'll give you a lot of information about it. This is it here. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions um, for me regarding this back pain? No, I think I yeah. think it's just you know, I just strain yeah. my back and I just want to know. Yeah. Um, regarding um regarding this as well, mm -hmm. you don't meet any of the criteria for um you don't meet any of the right red flag criteria. Um, meaning you don't meet any of the criteria for us to for immediate transfer to hospital, immediate suggestion for you to go to hospital. Mm -hmm. You don't have any loss of bladder, bladder control. Your temperature is good. Mm -hmm. You don't have any abnormal vital signs. Um, your thoracic, you don't have any thoracic or chest pain. Your abdomen, it's not tender. Mm -hmm. um, it feels good. It feels this, uh, it feels feels soft, and um, you're not getting any pain through there. Um, I've been able to see you walk. I believe that you can go to the bathroom and you can move around quite well. Um, from the looks of you as well, it doesn't look like you have any general illnesses, it doesn't look like you're, you're sick or you have mm -hmm. any, 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 anything that I should be worried about. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you're not experiencing any pain down both legs, which is quite important. Um, and because of that, I am happy to leave you at home. Okay, yeah. I might okay. just go and maybe see my doctor if it gets worse, yeah. maybe. That's perfect. Yeah, okay. Well, Thank you. Thank welcome. you so much. See you later.